the guru of love, your loveologist, Dr. Ava Cadell. Hi, I'm Dr. Ava Cadell, your personal certified love and sexologist, here to inspire you to make love and sex a priority in your life. I want to help you to get rid of any guilt or any shame that you have so that you can enjoy your natural sex drive. Our hot topic today is climax, as in orgasms. And we are going to talk about different kinds of orgasms that you can have in different kinds of ways. So stay tuned to find out about unigasms, bigasms, trigasms, blended orgasms, and even a mind-over-body orgasm. What is your ultimate orgasm? Give me a call on our toll-free number. From the U.S., it is 1-877-711-5611. Or if you are an international caller, you can dial 1-772-978-9099 or email me at questions at wetalksex.com. And we'll be right back with orgasm. So don't go away. Did you know that nearly half of all women are not getting their share of orgasms? It's horrible. You know what that means? It means they're not being stimulated properly. Or they could be suffering from gynecological, hormonal, or even neurological disorders. But more commonly, women have psychological blocks when they can't have an orgasm. And some of those blocks include traumatic past sexual experiences or a fear of losing control during sex, of course. Um, it can also be caused by resentment towards your partner or feeling guilty about sex if you've been raised, you know, in a repressive sort of environment. And fear of intimacy or fear of failure or rejection even lack of knowledge about your own body's responses can prevent you from having an orgasm. And then there's low self-esteem. Yeah, if you have no self-worth, you may not be able to have an orgasm. Being really inhibited can also prevent the big O. Poor communication is another one. Or unrealistic expectations, thinking that an orgasm is something that it is not. So, ladies, you must take full responsibility for your own orgasm by getting into a juicy state of mind and surrendering yourself to the pleasures of orgasmic intensity. And we're going to help you do that. And by the way, guys, you are included in this, too, because we're going to talk about multiple orgasms for you. Oh, yes, including nipple orgasms, prostate orgasms, all kinds of orgasms you may not have tried. The phone lines are now open, so give me a call at one 711 5611 and I am going to take my first caller, Jamie. Jamie is on line three. Hi, Jamie. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, it's pretty much a quick question. Out of curiosity, I mean, what would be like, um, how would you define orgasm um, since, um, you know, I wouldn't say characteristics, but what traits or how do you know that there's an orgasm and it's not like something being faked? Are you talking about a woman? How do you know when a woman's yeah, faking a female, it? Exactly, a female, rather. Oh, that's not easy, Jamie, because a lot of women, and it's unfortunate that they have to fake an orgasm, but often they fake it not to hurt your feelings. Right. So the only way that you can really tell is if you look after she has an orgasm at her vulva and watch it actually fibulating, like, you know, twitching and and moving, because after an orgasm, a woman's body is still responding and moving. Like trembling? Yeah, trembling. Right. Now, having said that, some women can make their vulva tremble by squeezing their own PC muscles, you know, doing kegels. So if she wants to fake it and she doesn't want you to know, 
There's nothing you can do about it except be a better lover. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, okay, you are welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your call, Jamie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Dr. Ava Cadell, and we are talking about orgasms today, all kinds of different orgasms. And some people think there's only one kind of orgasm, but I am here to tell you that there are lots of different kinds. And, you know, it's about stimulation of different parts of your body because each one will create different kinds of feelings ranging from quick, short, localized, deep, concentrated to full body melting orgasms. So let's start with a simple unigasm. Okay, this is an orgasm where stimulation is directed only to one primary erogenous zone. So it can be the penis, the prostate, the testicles, the clitoris, the G-spot, the anus, or the nipples. I want to tell you about nipple orgasms because not everybody's heard of them. For women, when they have their breast caressed and their nipples sucked, it releases oxytocin. And that's the chemical that makes them feel like they are in love. So if you want to give your woman a nipple orgasm, make sure that you caress and lick both of her breasts, not just her nipples. But nipple stimulation is an area that a lot of guys enjoy too. But they rarely think of having a nipple orgasm. Now... Most men who are into nipple stimulation, they want deeper, more vacuum-sucking motions from their lovers, not so much teasing around the nipple area. And some guys really enjoy having their nipples nibbled on. So ladies, find out how much pain or pleasure your man wants on his nipples. Some men actually have one nipple that's more sensitive than the other. So while you suck on one, you can pinch the other and then ask him which one feels most erotic. So you know what? You could be the first one to introduce him to a unigasm through his nipples. All right. That felt kind of good. As I said, the uh, lines are open. Give me a call right now. We are talking about orgasms, but you can ask me anything at all. Anything about love, relationships, intimacy, or sex. The number, again, is one 711 5611 And we have Marty on line five. Welcome to the show, Marty. Hello. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing great. What is your question? What is the uh, prostate orgasm exactly? Oh, I love that question. So a prostate orgasm is also known as prostate milking. Okay. Okay. So if you were to have your prostate milked or if you wanted to have a prostate orgasm, I would recommend that you tell your lover to put on a latex glove with plenty of lubricant on it before she inserts her finger slowly into your anus. Mm -hmm. And then... She sort of puts her finger palm up two to three inches deep inside, aiming towards your navel. Okay. And once she feels the sensation of pushing against like a walnut-sized lump, Mm -hmm. and you have to tell her, then she's reached the prostate, otherwise known as the male Mm G-spot. Exactly. Now, it it might make you feel like you need to urinate, so I would recommend peeing before you go searching for your prostate. Okay. The good news is the prostate produces semen, so massaging it might make you feel like having an orgasm, and you might even ejaculate. Mm, Okay. Do you like that? Uh, That sounds interesting. I think it does. I think every man should explore his prostate. It is an erogenous zone. It does not mean you're gay. It's just a wonderful way of making love. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for your call. Uh, Yeah, the the, the more you know, the better it gets. Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Knowledge is power. And sexual knowledge equals sexual satisfaction. Yes. Power to the prostate. (laughs) Yay! Power to the prostate. I love that. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Marty, for your call. All right, ma'am. You are listening to Dr. Ava Cadell on Sex Drive, where we talk sex. And we now have 
Gabrielle on line three. Welcome to the show, Gabrielle. Oh, it's actually Gabriel, but that's okay. Oh, forgive me, I, Gabriel. Not the first time, but it's okay. Um, actually, um, I had a question. Um, my partner, you know, um, she kind of complains sometimes, not often, but because um, I can't exactly, you know, ejaculate as soon as she can. Because a lot of times it takes like it can take up to several hours. For, and now, is there a way to, or what would be a good way to? You know, rush it on the spot. You know, like for quickies or whatnot. Ah, what is the fastest way for a woman to reach her orgasm? I got it, Gabriel. Oh, I man. am gonna give. I'm gonna give you the answer as soon as we come back from the break. I have the answer for you. I know how to boost her orgasm, and I'm gonna share it with you. So don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Sex Drive, where we know that sex is between the ears, not just between the legs. And we were talking to Gabriel before the break, and he wanted to know what was the fastest way to make his woman come. So, Gabriel, when your lover is fully aroused before intercourse, you can boost the odds that she will have an orgasm. So this is what I want you to do. Okay, step one, start out by kissing her passionately. Women love kissing. By the way, some women can actually have an orgasm from kissing. And I think kissing is so erotic that I call it facial intercourse. Okay, so you're kissing her passionately. Then tell her how hot she looks as you are giving her an erotic massage, followed by oral sex, and finally... Put yourself inside her slowly. She will be ready, willing, and able to climax with you. What do you think about that? I think it's. I think it's going to work. <laughs> I think it's. I know it does. So call me and let me know next week. I sure will. Okay. Thank you so much for your call. You are listening to Sex Drive. We are talking about orgasms today, all different kinds of orgasms. Our phone lines are now open, so do give us a call at one eight seven 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 one one five six one one. Or if you are shy, you can email me at questions at we talk sex dot com. And let's talk to Jane, who is on line five. Welcome to the show, Jane. Hello, Dr. Ava. Hi, sweetie. What's your question? Well, I don't actually have a question. I just had a story I'd like to share real quick. Oh, love stories. Okay, go for it. <laughs> well, my boyfriend is very attentive in bed, and he's always looking for different ways to satisfy me. And we've tried nipples and, and clitoris and all kinds of stuff, and it, and it works. It's nice. But it was never something wild and mind-blowing for me. And there was one night when um, we were actually sleeping and he got up and started... I was laying on my stomach and he started kissing my back. And it felt so incredible that I felt like I was going to go right over the edge just from him kissing my back. How far down did he go? He went up and down, all the way up and down. Did he from go my, down from the, the cracks of, of your neck? butt? Yeah. 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 You know, licking the crack, the, the butt and spreading the cheeks is an orgasmic technique that women and men both love. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it just goes to prove to you that there are so many ways that you can have an orgasm, not just through a blowjob or just through clitoral stimulation. Um, one of my favorite orgasms is called the bigasm. Bi means two. And it's stimulating two erogenous zones at the same time. So it can be nipples and anus. It can be penis and balls. It can be G-spot and clit. It can be prostate and perineum. That's the landing strip between his butt and balls. But another 
um, amazing orgasm is the blended orgasm. And it's exactly as it sounds. It's blending more than one orgasm. So you start by choosing your favorite orgasm techniques, such as licking her clit or giving him a blowjob. And then you get your lover really aroused. And once they have this high level of arousal, then you switch to another orgasm technique that you enjoy, such as G-spot for a woman and prostate for a guy. And then when they get really aroused just before they come, you switch back to the first technique, you know, the clit or the blowjob. And then when they get aroused, you go back to the second technique. So you do it at least three times before your lover reaches their orgasm. That's a blended orgasm. And if you haven't tried it, you might like it. Our lines are open. I'm Dr. Ava Cadell here at Sex Drive. And let's talk to Amanda on line four. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Hi, Hi sweetie. What's your question? Um, I was just wondering. Every time I have an orgasm, it only lasts for like two or three seconds. And my husband feels really, really bad because he doesn't know how to make it last longer for me. Can you help us in any way? Well, sure. It sounds like you probably have a clitoral orgasm, which is what most women do. And that's a very rapid orgasm. It's a fabulous one, so don't knock it. But I would tell your husband to give you a G-spot orgasm. So he has to explore your G-spot with his finger, a nice, wet, lubricated finger. And he puts it inside your vagina Um so he's got to put it, I want you to imagine that there's a clock inside your vagina with 12 o'clock pointing towards your navel. And okay. most women have their G-spot located somewhere between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. So he huh. needs to insert one or two fingers, palm up, about two to three inches inside the vagina, and... When he finds it, you're going to know because it's going to feel like you need to pee. So you want to empty your bladder first and tell him it's going to feel like a little small bean that's going to swell up as he stimulates it. And by the way, he can stimulate your G-spot if you have sex sitting on top of him but facing away from him towards his feet. So he can all... Yeah. And your G-spot orgasm may be longer deeper, more intense than your clitoral orgasm. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I now, another thing you can try is the best sex toy on the planet. It's called the Wee Vibe, and you yeah. can actually put it inside you while he's penetrating you so that it stimulates your G-spot and your clit at the same time while he's having intercourse with you. It wouldn't get in the way? No, the Wee Vibe never gets in the way. It's amazing. It will enhance your orgasm. Huh. Yeah, so okay. check it out at WeVibe.com. I guess I'll have to look into that. All right, sweetie. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. You are listening to Dr. Ava Cadell, your host here at Sex Drive, where we talk about love, relationships, intimacy, and sex. But we are talking about orgasms today because... Orgasm is the most natural high. Orgasm is wired to our brain, not just between our legs. And, you know, orgasm gives us confidence. And orgasm can unite two lovers into one. And that's why I'm sharing some of my favorite orgasm techniques with you. Now, if you don't have a partner, you should still have orgasms. In fact, you know what? You can even have a mind-over-body orgasm. That's right, without ever touching yourself. This is an orgasm where you think your way to orgasm. Uh huh. Sexual thoughts can activate the brain, just like sexual touching does. And if you've ever watched porn, you know what I'm talking about. But even if you're not into porn, you can achieve a mind-over-body orgasm by tapping into all five of your senses. So, okay, just imagine. Imagine a fabulous lover's tongue between your legs. What your lover would smell like and, and how your lover would look naked. 
Imagine touching, kissing, licking, tasting his or her body and hear the moaning with pleasure and become aware of your own feelings as you let your excitement build. The trick here is not to touch yourself, but to let the flow of your orgasm take you on a mental journey to sexual ecstasy. And by the way, this can also be a fun, you know, exercise to do with a partner, you know, as a safe sex activity, because you're not even touching each other, but you're having this, this mind altering sexual experience. And we all know that the most erotic organ is the mind. This is Dr. Ava Cadell at Sex Drive. Give me a call if you want to talk about orgasms or if you want to talk about anything at all. one 711 5611 Or email me at questions at wetalksex.com. And coming up later in the hour, we have my beautiful celebrity guest, the gorgeous model actress and TV host, Brooke Long. You've seen her on TV on Deal or No Deal, in Entourage, in lots of shows. And we're going to find out what turns her on. So don't go away. We will be right back. Our phone lines are open and we have Brandon Maxwell on the line. He is a friend of mine who's also an expert on male multiple orgasms. And he wants to say something about the timing difference between male and female orgasms. Is that right, Brandon? Yes. 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 Hi, what do you have to say you. about that? Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. You're um, welcome. Well, I, I wanted to talk about um, even uh, the another kind of orgasm, which I'd call the mutual multiple orgasm. Ooh, that love is, the name. That is the, the, when a man and a woman can achieve multiples together and ride wave after wave of orgasm. Now, most men and women don't know that men can multiple too. They're aware that it's a, it's a um, you know, tantric technique that's rather complex and involves long sexual poses. I, 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 in, in my DVD, I figured out a way to teach men how to, how to do that more simply and, you know, and, and very easily in three simple steps. But... But what's most interesting... What are the is, three simple steps? Well, Just wh- it, the three steps involve... I mean, to explain them here would be a little bit long, but essentially what it is, is it's teaching a man how to separate his orgasm from ejaculation. Most men think that orgasm is the same thing as ejaculation for them. Okay, so that's it, step one. What's step so, two? So step one is beginning to, to uh, elongate the space between... Um, their orgasm, what they feel as like that, that split second high they experience before ejaculation. Okay, step two. Expanding that from, well, from one two. second to five to ten seconds. Okay. And they do that on their own. I teach them how to do that. Step two is to actually experience a full orgasm without ejaculating on your own. And step and three? Step, step three is to, is, is, adds a, a maneuver, I call the triple maneuver, that teaches you how to experience that with a lover. But what's Ooh, and most, most interesting... Where can they get your DVD? Where oh, can it, listeners get a, your DVD? It's on Climaxwell. I said Climaxwell.com. And Climax. one note I should say is there are no cookies on my website or anything, so you can safely visit it without worrying about getting junk mail. Um, but, but what's most interesting, I think, is that, and more relevant for a show, is that most people think that um, you know the that uh, you know it's very it's almost impossible to to have for women to have an orgasm during intercourse for about sixty percent of women, and a lot of that I think has to do with timing. That that the female women who are orgasmic, they they need a longer time to build, and a lot of men take a lot, you know, uh, come way too quickly. And, oh, I agree. Women the, need a lot more foreplay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, very much so. But also, it, there is an element, I mean, even if you do the, which, which I love the technique you, you're teaching, woman on top, either cowboy or front ways, 
is a very good way to stimulate the G-spot, but a lot of men don't last long enough to let that G-spot build. And in fact, most men who get my DVD, they're not getting it for their own pleasure. They're getting it for their, their, their lover's pleasure so right. that they can last long enough so that instead of eject, you know, your orgasm being the end of intercourse, that it's, it can be just the beginning. Good. And, so and give out your um, website one more time, Brandon, because we're running out of time. What is oh, it, sweetie? Oh, fantastic. Climaxwell.com. Thank you Climax, for having me on. Climaxwell.com? Climaxwell.com. C-L-I-M-A-X-W-E-L-L.com. Thank you so much for your call. This is awesome. Let's take another call right now from uh, Heather. Heather on line five. Hi, Heather. Welcome to the show, sweetie. Hello, how are you doing, Dr. Ava? I am doing great. What is your question, Heather? Well, it was really interesting listening to what Brandon said, and he basically um, said the right thing that I uh, feel is that it's almost 60% of women are not having an orgasm, and I'm basically one of those. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, so I um, I always wondered, uh, is it more powerful for the man to have an orgasm? Because I, I never seem to really have one or enjoy myself, but yet he's having this huge, powerful experience, you know, and I'm like, oh, wow. Well, you, you, have, you have to train your man. In fact, I think you should train him to give you a trigasm because you have been deprived. Yes, and I'm a trigasm <laughs> is the ultimate orgasm, Heather. It's the result of arousing three points of pleasure. So it's the clitoris, the G-spot, and the anus simultaneously. So you tell your guy that he needs to give you oral sex on your clit. He needs to find your G-spot, either with a G-spot vibrator or with his fingers, and then stimulate your anus either on the outside or on the inside, whatever you prefer. But you tell your man what you want because he can't read your mind. You say, I want my orgasm first. That's basically you say what that? we have to do. We, we Can have you say to that? Do the oral sex first. Yeah, we have to have oral sex first just for me to even have one. Right. And he doesn't last very long. You know, it's like maybe three to four minutes because oh, he was right about that too. Men just go, you know, get in and do what they do, and next thing you know, it's done. You know? So. Well, men are very goal oriented. Yeah. But women uh, enjoy the journey more than the destination. So That's I exactly think it. that your guy should definitely go to ClimaxWell.com and get Brandon Maxwell's DVD. I think it'll help him. I think so I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah you, you buy that for him as a gift. You okay. tell him to buy you a, a Wee Vibe, okay. and that will help you have an orgasm during intercourse. I think that would be great. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that, actually. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for your call. Sure. You're listening to Sex Drive, and I am Dr. Ava Cadell, your host. We're talking about love, relationships, intimacy, and sex. And today we've been talking a lot about orgasm, about G-spot orgasm, about Mind over matter, mind over body orgasm, blended orgasms, clitoral orgasms, bigasms, nipple orgasms. I hope that you've learned a new orgasm and that you get to practice it with someone who's worthy of it. Because, you know, sex is one of the greatest gifts that we have. And sharing yourself with someone who's worthy is, is a precious gift. It's, I think, the most precious gift that you can give someone. So let's celebrate good, healthy, love, intimacy, and sex. And coming up, I have a very special celebrity guest. She's absolutely beautiful. Her name is Brooke Long. She's a professional model. She's an actress, singer, dancer, and TV host. And you've seen her on HD Network, Smash Brain TV. She's also the co-host of Get Out and has appeared on a variety of TV shows like Deal or No Deal. Yep, she's one of those gorgeous models. She's been on the Jamie Kennedy Experiment. She's been on Entourage, Bound for Glory, Showtime, Dreams. She's been on Jimmy Kimmel. And besides acting, 
Brooke has, you know, graced the pages of lots of magazines like Maxim and AFET. A FHM and Muscle and Fitness. And I know she has a new calendar coming out. I know she has a new movie coming out. So I am looking forward to speaking to Brooke and finding out what she's doing and finding out what turns her on. This is Dr. Ava Cadell. I thank you for all your calls today on Orgasm. I hope you learned a new orgasm. And we will be right back with our beautiful celebrity guest so stay tuned stay sexy keep a juicy frame of mind i'm dr ava cadell the host of your sex drive kick your performance in the high gear it's time for sex drive sex drive get on up like a sex machine and now here's the host with the most the guru of love your loveologist, Dr. Ava Cadell. Welcome back to Sex Drive. Everyone knows how to have sex, but lovemaking is truly an art that you can learn right here on Sex Drive. And I'm happy to introduce my celebrity guest. She is the beautiful and talented Brooke Long. Welcome to the show, Brooke. Thank you. So I know you have a movie coming out soon. Tell us about that. I do. Uh, the movie is actually called I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, and it's based off of the book written by Tucker Max that was a number one seller, and it's hilarious. If you've seen Hangover, this is taking it to the next level. <laughs> so it's a great cast. It's a great group of people, and uh, I cannot wait for it to come out. It's coming out at the end of September. And what kind of role do you play in it, Brooke? Um, in that film, I actually play a stripper. Funny okay. Enough. <laughs> and you're a yeah. you're a dance you're a dancer, so you probably are really good at playing a stripper. I am a dancer. Yes, I have been dancing since I was two years old. So I've also danced for a lot of uh, NBA and NFL teams. So I do have quite a bit of experience. So playing a stripper wasn't uh, too difficult for me. <laughs> right now, you also have a calendar coming out, don't you? I do. I have a calendar. It's called the SNI calendar. It actually competes with Sports Illustrated. So if you go to the stores and you're looking at calendars, we're the one right next to Sports Illustrated. It's called the SNI. It's a gorgeous group of 12 women, and I am so honored to be a part of this calendar. Congratulations. That is awesome. Thank you. Oh, now, that's a great opportunity. So, Brooke, is it true that you have some dangerous hobbies? <laughs> I do. I tend to be a bit of an adrenaline junkie. I've jumped out of airplanes. I've jumped off bridges, bungee jumping, skydiving. I do sword fighting occasionally for fun. Um, I got into that when I was working shows in Vegas. So I just I love taking on new challenges, and the riskier the better. <laughs> Ooh, now does that go for sex too? Uh, you know, it actually uh, doesn't quite go for sex as much. I'm not into the... Um, the dominatrix side of things, that doesn't work for me, but I am somebody that's always excited to try new things. Good. Now, as an incredibly beautiful woman in Hollywood, what is your biggest complaint about dating or about men? You know, I choose to typically date outside of Hollywood because it is a town that is overwhelmingly full of people that are self-absorbed and very, very competitive. And I found that dating somebody that is in the industry, they typically have a lot of money and flaunt it, or they're struggling to work and building their career, and that means they envy and get jealous of the times that I'm working and they're not, and it becomes a competition. So I tend to try to steer clear of that. Okay, so you don't, you don't that means you don't date in Hollywood, but you live in L.A., correct? I do. I live in L.A., but I choose to typically date people that don't work in the industry. Oh, okay. So they can still be from Hollywood, well, they but they just can't be in the, they can't right. Be they just Hollywood can't be in. People. Got it. Got it. Well, my yeah. engineer, my engineer is flashing and asking if he has a chance. So, if a guy wanted to sweep you off your feet, what would he have to do to impress you, first or to of all, get you to go theory, out with you? Well, people's first thing is money. People think that they can buy anything they want if they have money. Personally, in my opinion, if I know a guy has money by the first date. That's a problem. Why do I know you have money? Are you flaunting it that 
up front that it's obvious that you have money, and to me, that's a problem. I like somebody that is real, somebody that is genuine, somebody that has their feet planted on the ground. So I, even if they have money, I don't want to know about it. So does that mean that you would date somebody that's very poor? That it doesn't does have, mean I typically yeah. do date people that have less money. I want a guy that will take me to a dive bar and Applebee's and <laughs> Red Robin, some of my favorite places. I just love the local town, the local pub. Even in L.A., we have those places. People choose to go to the posh Hollywood top restaurants. To me, that's not impressive. To me, what's impressive is that you can live in a town that is surrounded by superficiality, and you can still go to the local dive bars, the small, quaint, ma and pa stores and restaurants, and live life that way without having to be showy. Okay, so now we know, guys, the size of your wallet doesn't matter. Very it really important. doesn't. Yeah, I hear you. So how important is it for your man to be a good lover? Uh, I think that's very important. That's something that kind of makes or breaks a relationship. I mean, there's certain things that you can work on and grow together, but there's also the passion and the bond that is naturally there that you can't really work towards. You know, and there's just there has to be that natural chemistry, that natural attra- attraction, that animal instinct. And if that's not there, that's not something that you can work on and build. So let's say you guys have the chemistry and he's a good kisser, but he's not just very creative in bed. So would you be willing to train him, to teach him, to direct him? Or would it's that annoy I'm, you? No, it's something I'm willing to work with him on, but there's, there are people that cannot be taught. There are people that just can't do it. I find a good, a good indicator is dancing. If a guy ah. can't dance and can't move his hips, often that comes to show in the bedroom as well, that he can't move his hip, he's not creative. If you, They can't get creative and just have fun and let loose on a dance floor, especially with a couple of drinks in them, then they probably aren't going to be capable of doing it in the bedroom either. Wow. You see, you're a great dancer, which is going to totally make guys feel inhibited. And so many guys hate dancing. So you've taught guys something that you want a guy who knows how to move his hips, who knows how to, you know, dance and be loose, because that tells you that he's going to be good in bed. It really does. And for me, I don't have to dance with the guy. It's just seeing them out there having fun dancing on the dance floor. He doesn't have to dance with a girl. It's just being able to have fun and let go. Because if you can have fun and let go on the dance floor, even if you look like a complete retard, that's okay. Uh, Just having fun with it means that you can have fun in the bedroom. Because I like to have fun. I don't want to be with somebody in an intimate situation where they can't laugh, they can't have fun, and it just makes it uncomfortable. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, you are a dancer, you're a singer, you're an actress, you're a model. So is there anything that you are really still inhibited about, you know, sexually? Because you sound so liberated, so confident. But I know a lot of people want to know if you have any insecurities at all. I was a virgin for so long. I was one of my last friends to lose my virginity. Um, I was into my 20s when I lost my virginity. And wow, because you're still in your 20s, and you just lost I'm your virginity? I'm still in my 20s, and I actually am married and divorced, and I've been through multiple relationships, and I have to say, I was even married, and I was so uncomfortable in the bedroom, and we, I never got an opportunity myself to climax during that relationship, and... It's just I was holding back. I was so uncomfortable in my own skin that it took a while until I could finally open up and just let go. And it actually took a guy that I could just laugh and be stupid and goof off with because I just I finally felt comfortable in my own skin. I felt comfortable with him. And that was when I was finally able to just take my that you know intimacy in my life to a whole new level. Well, I think a lot of women can really relate to that, and I thank you for your honesty and your openness because people look at you and they think, oh, my God, she has no inhibitions, she has the best orgasms, she has (laughs) no issues, but sharing that is going to help empower women. I feel that one of the saddest things in today's society is that so many parents raise their children that sex is bad, and I understand not wanting your kids to have sex when they're young teenagers, but... I hate that we have feel obligated to put it in children's heads that you don't have sex till you're married. You don't have sex this and that. And 
it, you put that in kids' heads. And then when I did start having sex, I felt like I was committing a sin. I felt like I was a horrible person because I was having sex, but I wasn't comfortable. And it's when you realize that sex is a beautiful thing and that it's okay and that you should be comfortable with it, that you finally feel like you're able to really enjoy it. Yes, and that's what we do on Sex Drive. We empower people by letting them know that it is a beautiful gift to share with someone who's worthy of it. So thank you for reinforcing that. And it's thank you true. for being a fabulous guest today on the show, Brooke. I no wish problem. you continued success in your acting and your love life and your modeling and everything that you do. Thank you so much, Dr. Ava. It's been a true pleasure. That was the beautiful and talented Brooke Long. So make sure that you look for her upcoming movie and also her calendar. I would like to thank my producers, Rob, Tim Sr. and Tim Jr., my engineers, Ron, Ray, and Shane. This is Dr. Ava Cadell, and I'm looking forward to being with you again on Sex Drive at wetalksex.com. So until then, go celebrate good, healthy love and sex with an SNL sandwich. It's a generous helping of sex between two slices of love.